Epson tools, the one thing that I want to show you is how you can actually use the multi-touch abilities of the panel, okay? So, a little while ago, I was lucky enough to go to Australia Zoo. That's me and my friend William, William the Cheetah, okay? Now, because we've enabled the Windows Inc. workspace, okay, that enables this little thing up here called Edit and Create, okay? So if you click on Edit and Create, you can instantly hit Draw, okay? And we can draw right over the, the, uh, the image straight away, okay? So we're not using anything, we haven't used any other program we've put in, this is just purely in Windows. Now I mentioned before as well about the features of uh, being able to use multi-touch. So if we use two fingers, we can zoom in, we can zoom out, okay? I could do it with one hand, but my hand's obviously not as big for the whole panel. We can also whip across and we can pull other files and elements out of the folders that are already in there, okay? So just like you'd do on an Android device or an iPad, you've got the same ability to do that as well, okay? Very, very simple. Now, the main reason why I'm here today is to show you guys how to use the uh, easy interactive tools, okay? The big thing about easy interactive is that it allows you six points of touch, it allows you to draw over live elements on the screen, and it also allows you to use a whiteboard and go in between the live screen and the whiteboard simultaneously, which is a very awesome feature to say that you could show something and then you can go and talk about the whiteboard. And that's what we're gonna to do today. Because I'm right-handed, I'm gonna move my presentation over here, otherwise I'll be leaning over the board awkwardly. Very, very simple. We've got the easy interactive tools icon here. Now, it looks like a whiteboard with a pen, with rainbows coming out of it. Okay, very easy to remember because we're going to be using the whiteboard and the finger scenario. So all we do is we just double click on that and that opens up giving us two toolbars. Okay, we've got the top toolbar and the toolbar on the right hand side. Anyone looking at that toolbar on the right hand side would probably think it's very reminiscent of paint. And if you've ever used paint before, you're going to find this a very easy program to use. Now, we're going to get to the top toolbar in a moment, but I just want to draw one thing Currently we're selected on the computer screen and you can see the computer screen. Next to it is a whiteboard, we'll speak about that in a moment, but that will take us into the whiteboard mode. Now, I've stepped over here and the toolbar is all the way over there. I could do one of three things, okay? I could either move it over here if I wanted to, okay? You can place it wherever you choose. Or, you'll notice that there's little arrows on the left and right hand side of the screen. I can actually touch it and it's gonna snap here for me to do it, okay? If I wanted to, I could then move it further into the middle of the desktop, which considering my icons are here, it's probably not a bad place to have it. We're gonna go through the toolbar from top to bottom, and then we're gonna use the elements that I've been speaking about in the toolbar. First of all, you notice there's a mouse at the top. Okay, this is very critical. When it's selected on mouse, you'll notice that you can still control the panel in the exact same way as you were previously, because the mouse is enabling mouse on the, keyboard, on the, um, on the computer. We've got shapes and text, and we've got a selection tool. Now this is the most critical thing to understand, and this is where most people come undone. It's the only place that people sometimes trip on, and it's only for your first operation. But if you've got the selection tool selected, okay, as I have done there, I'm not gonna be able to move those icons because I'm now selecting elements that I've drawn onto the desktop, okay? We've got a pen, a highlighter, We'll come back to those in a moment. We've got black, red, and blue, an eraser, and a clear screen, okay? So, when I was talking about being able to use six points of touch, I've now selected a red pen, and straight away, just using five, my whole hand, I've been able to draw on the screen, okay? Now, when I said that you're able to use this in a live environment, if I click clear, I can click the mouse, and I could actually play that video that I was showing you just before. And while the video is playing, if I slightly minimise the screen down here, you can see the tools are still there, okay? So I might, for some reason, want to hit pause on the video, okay? And then I might wish to highlight the boat in the video, okay? If I wanted to, I could actually have the video play, and I could draw birds in real time. They're going to stay there, overlaid on the video. Okay, very, very handy if you're wanting to bring up, say, a live website that you're showing. Maybe it's something that you're about to launch as a website. You want to bring it up and then you want to be able to annotate over it and show your uh, internal staff or maybe your students what you're doing on that website. Okay? Now, let's go through these in more detail before we go into the, web, uh, into the whiteboard part of the program. Back, forward undo, redo, so if I wanted to, I could bring back my bird, okay? 
I could also undo it, bring back my circle. Okay, very good if you're doing something where you've made a mistake and you want to obviously bring it back. We've got shapes, predefined shapes. So if I take a triangle, make it a fairly thick triangle and make it lime green, when I draw, if I draw a triangle, you notice that I drew up and down. If I draw from top to bottom, it rotates it. Okay, it can be quite handy if you're using circles for things like Venn diagrams. I might want to draw two circles, talk about what we can do in those circles, you know, common ground, things like that. We can also add text if we wanted to. So I've clicked the text icon, and now when I touch it, it will add text where I choose to. So it brings up the keyboard and also adds the text, gives me a uh, font, a size, and any other things that you want to do to manipulate the text. Can be quite handy. Don't use it that often, but it's there if you choose. We're going to clear the whole screen again. So just remember that bottom one down there, clear the whole screen. We also have, as well as the predefined colors, the ability to choose a whole bunch of different colors and thicknesses. So we might want to choose, say, a thick uh, light blue, okay? And we can now use that as well, okay? We've got the ability to highlight, once again, thicknesses and colors. And as we go over with the highlight, you'll notice that the more I go over the same area, the thicker it gets until it becomes fully opaque, okay? So that's a really cool feature if you want to highlight things to a point where they either disappear or just to really emphasize what you're trying to talk about. Okay. On the right hand side you've got the thick colors, so you've got a thick black. On the left hand side you've got a thin version, so you, you can utilize those to how you see fit. Okay. If you're doing a presentation to a small group, thin ones might be acceptable. If you're wanting to just really get it out there for everyone, always use the thick ones, they're a lot easier on the eyes to see. Same again, thick and thin in regards to the eraser works very similar to what you'd have on the end of a pen. If I draw a line through here, it's going to erase that specific part. If I do it with two fingers, it's going to erase twice. Four fingers, it's going to erase more. If I want to clear the whole screen, everybody, all together now. It's great. Screen. If I made a mistake, go back to the top. Excellent. I see lots of nods around there. I think you guys are going to be able to use this really, really well. So, what we're going to do now is I'm just going to draw something on this screen, okay? Um, I'm going to draw a fluffy red sheep because I've never seen a red sheep before. There you go. So there's my sheep. He's just going to stay there. We'll come back to him in a moment. Okay, now we want to use this as a whiteboard. Okay, and this is where it comes a really powerful program. We go up to here to the whiteboard picture. Instantly we're presented with a blank white page. Okay, so let me just move this over here for a moment. And I want to speak very briefly about these top icons, and I want to get someone up to come and help me out again. So we've got a home icon. We click on that, brings up what you would see if you uh, don't disable this checkbox. I've turned it off because I don't want to see this anymore. But it gives you some options of where the program can start. I just have it starting on the desktop as you saw. You've got a new page, open a previous uh, file, and save as. We'll come to that at the end of the presentation because we'll actually save something. You'll see how that works. Then we have these four icons here. Now these four icons are really, really cool, okay? First one we'll skip over, but you've got a square with a plus, okay, it's add a page. We've got two squares overlaid over top of each other, so that's copy a page, and then we've got one with a red X, and I'm pretty sure you know what that is, that's obviously to delete a page, okay? Now, we're gonna use the copy page uh, right now, okay, and we're gonna draw a picture. So Abby, do you wanna come up and we're gonna draw a picture? You can pick whatever colour you want, mm -hmm. and I want you to draw a face. But every time you add an element to the face, so when you do a circle for the head, I want you to hit copy. When you do a mouth, I want you to hit copy. Okay. Understand? Yeah. Excellent. So considering you're over there. Yep, this one. Oh, there we go. So okay. pick a colour. Cool. And then. Yep, you can step in front of the panel. It's fine. <laughs> and then blue. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Copy. Copy, yep. Yeah. Getting artistic here. <laughs> lots and lots of different colours. Copy. We want to go hair as well. Yeah, give them some hair. Awesome. Oh, oh that's okay. Yeah, that's right. yeah copy. Perfect. Now I want to add a couple of elements as well. So I want to give, there you go, a shirt. Okay, and then I'm also going to give this person some cool shades. Okay. Excellent. So now we've got a person all ready to go, rock and roll. Thank you very much, Abby. Nice work. Now, we have a complete picture here. Now, the reason why I kept on hitting the copy picture 
is this is the really cool difference that you have over a traditional whiteboard. Okay, we actually have endless amounts of whiteboards. Now, although we've ended up with this final product, which is what you would if you had a dry erase whiteboard, okay, what we've actually done in every single instance is we hit copy. Now, come back to this first one here. It's a square with lots of little squares, very reminiscent of PowerPoint, where we can now click on that and we can see how we actually progress through that picture. And I can select each individual slide and bring up every element that we've put onto that slide in one go, okay? The other really cool factor that we can now do is that we can actually click and hold and drag that to however we want to do it, okay? So we can rearrange the sequence, which can be really good within education. So you can do things where you might have words or you might have a storyboard or you might have numbers and you can rearrange things, okay? The ability to be able to take something, manipulate it and copy it and utilize this without having to delete it or save it makes your workflow very, very quick, okay? Now, you'll notice that when I draw over here, that disappeared, okay? This is gonna give me the opportunity now to tell you about a very cool button, but one that gets overlooked quite a lot. Down here, you've got a little toggle switch. Right now, you can see it's flipped into the down position, which means that every time I draw, the two toolbars stay in place. If I actually press that off, when I draw, the toolbars will disappear, okay? This is really good if you're gonna be utilizing just one workspace because then it gets any distractions out of the way. To bring it back, as you now know, press on the arrow, it jumps back, okay? I'll lock that one back down. Same scenario here, as I draw, it disappears. If I want to, up the top here in the left-hand corner, same thing, if I lock it into place, that's gonna stay there. Okay. So, as we continue with the presentation, I'm just gonna keep adding whiteboards on whiteboards on whiteboards, and we'll have a whole thing at the end where we can go through and review edit, save, change, things like that. Okay, so let's now add a new page, okay? So now that I've added a new page, this is currently white. But now we're gonna talk a little bit about the toolbox and how we can import and export different elements so you can really create some great outcomes for your presentations. So up here, we've got a toolbox. When we click on it, we have a number of different options. We're gonna skip over the top three to start off with because we need some elements on the screen to be able to use them. But we're gonna talk about these first uh, two on the second line. The first one here is a square, which fills the whole screen with a picture and an arrow for importing, okay? So we click on this, this is select a background. Now, selecting a background can be very, very handy because it can set a tone for a presentation. It can also make it a lot easier with some of the elements you're working with. So you can see here we've got some predefined backgrounds. So if we wanted to, we could click on a grid, puts a grid up, we can click on white lines, we could click on black lines, or we can have white, black, or green. For this part, I'm gonna uh, pick the blackboard, okay? Now, I quite like this because white does hurt my eyes after being on a screen for a long time. So being able to pick a darker color and then use very luminescent colors on top of that is actually quite a nice feature and I quite like doing that, especially if you're wanting to have a bit of a break from your traditional presentation. You want a new page? Just add a new page. We'll go back up here. Backgrounds can also be used as importing pictures. So these are the predefined versions, but if you wanted to, you just go to a folder. This one's already targeted to some pictures that I've got, and I can bring up a picture of a bird, okay? So I'll just hit open on that. Now I've got a picture of a bird on the screen, okay? Now, the great element about a background is that it's non-destructive, which means no matter what I do, if I draw over it and hit clear screen, the background will always stay. If that was a picture, and I'll show you that in a moment, the picture would delete because that's an added element. This is a background. Now that we've got the background up, there's a few, a few cool features that we can use in that top line. First of all, you can zoom in so you can see the square with the plus. So if I now highlight the section, it will zoom into that section, allowing me to actually draw on the panel on that particular section. And it'll also remember that, that when I close it, it will actually keep that on the original picture behind. So that's very handy. Furthermore, I can click on the spotlight, and as you can see, I now have a circle that you can see through, and everything else is shaded. To drive the spotlight, I just drive it by touching in the black, okay? So you can see the different elements of the bird that I'm highlighting. To augment the shape of the spotlight, I can drag on the gray, and that changes the size and the dimension of it. And if I wanted to, when I'm inside the spotlight, I can still draw like I had previously done, okay? Just remember, is up there. And right next to the spotlight is the opposite, which is a blind. 
Okay. So now we can go through and we can do the same thing, but we're now covering more of the screen. Okay. It's quite good if you're wanting to do a presentation where you want to reveal certain things at a certain time, or you just want to highlight uh, different elements of, say, an animal if you're in a teaching um, teaching scenario or something like that. You know, start with the tiger's tail, work your way up. Guess what the animal is? You'd be surprised if you do it with a leopard. People often get the uh, leopard and the cheetah mixed up. So now that we've got these elements here, okay, that's pretty much the most that you're going to do with that toolbox. Okay, the rest in the toolbox we've got a print, which if you've got it set up correctly, you can print from your computer or print directly from the laptop. We've got some settings, so you can change the spotlight from a circle into a square. Keyboard, just like you saw before, I'll just bring up the keyboard, not very fancy. And then you've also got the ability to take a snapshot, so if you do print screen. We won't use that very often because you can actually save directly from the program, but it is there in case you need it, okay? Excellent. So, oh, see I made a mistake there? Let's go back. So, Okay, anyone got any questions before I move on to the next section where we talk about importing pictures and manipulating stuff? Perfect. So, we add a new page, okay? And now we're going to go to the one last icon that we didn't talk about, which is the full square, but with the little picture and the arrow. So that's import picture, okay? Same kind of scenario, but instead of doing it as a whole background, we just import one picture, okay? So we've imported our panda, okay? And just like before, if I wanted to, I can draw over it. I can select it, I can let's try it again. It's not wanting to behave for me today. I can enlarge it by using the marquee tool. Um, if my finger was a bit dry because it's a bit damp in here, I could pull it and make it like I did previously. I can rotate it on any axis, okay? And as well as doing that, as I showed you before, I can draw over it. Now if I draw it in red, this will make a lot more sense. If you've ever used any uh, PowerPoint or Word or Publisher, you'll know that I've drawn over the picture, okay? Now you may want to send this picture to the front and the writing to the back at some point. So if you ever need to do anything like that, if you click the select button and click the picture, down here you've got a little arrow, and this arrow here becomes your new best friend. It gives you a whole bunch of different options. Copy, paste, cloning, grouping, ungrouping, bring to front, send to back. So for this example, I'm just going to hit the bring to front, and now that's over the, right, the written elements, okay? Depending on how you use this in your presentation, that might be handy, but from this perspective, that's pretty much all I'm going to touch on because it's a bit of an advanced feature, and it comes down to creativity and how you want to do it. Okay, so, last section. Who knows what this icon up here is? Who's old enough to remember what that is? Abby, do you know what it is? Document camera. Yes, oh, so, yeah. Yeah. so it is reminiscent of an overhead projector, yeah. and you are correct, Jack, it does actually then tap into the document camera or to any camera device that you've currently got affixed to your, to your laptop. So if we click on this, you'll notice that here behind me, my laptop is now filming everybody, okay? And this is really cool for the fact that you could use this with a document camera, you could use it with your laptop uh, webcam, and you could capture different elements. So in an education environment, it could be something like a picture or a book that you want to be able to scan in and you'd be able to use it in that respect. You might want to be able to highlight uh, grains of wood or uh, veins of a leaf and talk about it from a science perspective. Pretty much anything that you'd like to capture optically, you can do that. Now, this is where this program is fantastic. You can also record this in a live scenario, so you can utilize this to be able to record elements that you're doing. You can also make this full screen and in making it full screen, I'm also able to actually annotate in real time, okay? So the idea being is that what you're able to then do is you're able to then talk about your presentation and utilise this in real time. Furthermore, if I wanted to, I'm happy with how that's been conducted, I can hit the same button, which is the big square picture import, and it will take a snapshot in time, and it will put that in here as a created picture element. Okay. You look so sad, Peter. Mm -hmm. hey. Why do you look so sad, Peter? So, ultimately, that means that if you wanted to, you could, for a project, capture different shots in time. And this is just using my webcam. So, if you had a document camera or a, um, a digital microscope or something like that, then all those elements could be used as well. So, now that we've actually created this, this is one page of how many that we've created? Anyone want to guess? The clues on the board. Twelve. Twelve. Congratulations, it is. It's cool. So this is slide 7 of 12. 
So the thing about this is that if we click on here, we've now got 12 slides that if we wanted to, at any time, we can go back to every single one of those elements that we've created throughout this presentation, okay? Or brainstorming session or however you wanna do it and save them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to save. Click on the little floppy disk up there and hit save as. You've got two options here, okay? You've got two options here. You can either save it as a easy interactive file, which means that just like Publisher or PowerPoint, you could then open it back up again and manipulate all the elements, okay? Which is great if you're in a teaching scenario, you might be teaching in pairs or you might be ahead of a department for a year level. You could create something, give it to all your teachers and then you can come back and do that. Or you can change it to export very simply as a bitmap, PNG, JPEG or a PDF which means that that will then export every, of those, every one of those pages to be able to email as a final version, okay? Not gonna say my wonderful work today because I don't think there was anything in there of any great substance, but who remembers the red sheet that I drew? Yep, this is where this is really, really cool. If I want to, I can just click back to the screen to so see the computer. We now have the red sheet there. We can go back to the whiteboard and once again, we're back to where we were. So we can go easily to and from, either with a live computer environment or utilizing the whiteboard, which becomes very handy if you're trying to look at documents or a picture or an image or some sort of policy procedure, and then you want to extrapolate out what you want to do with that and how you want to manipulate it. So, very briefly, whiteboard, computer, webcam. We then have the um, uh, toolbox, the ability to create